الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بافواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم الهمنا مراشد امورنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا before the demise of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam There was always going to be the fear that after the wujud of a Nabi amongst the people when Allah's Nabi came to the Arabs it was called revolution. It came in a time where people were cutting and burying their own daughters. Mothers were understanding that I will give birth. There was a time in the time of Musa والسلام, that a mother was giving birth and the army of Fir'aun was killing the child. But then the Arabs reached a time that the father was the one killing the daughter so the mother would give birth and she would understand that this child is not going to survive very long there would be few times where the father would be out on the journey and the mother would give birth and she would understand if i have to say to the man this is your daughter he'll kill the girl so when the time would come when the father would return from the journey and he would find a girl in the house he would say who's this girl so she had to make a story that another woman gave birth and she was so scared that her father meaning that husband will kill the child so she left the young girl by me and then the father himself will say amazing how people can kill so lovely children just because it wasn't his daughter then he would look after the girl then he would show love to the girl and a time came when the mother really felt that now if i break the news she found such an attachment with the girl and the father such an attachment she said if i break the news to him now Now he will never kill that girl. He himself said amazing how people can kill this girl. And then the mother would take the chance and she would say to the father, "Wa idha bushira ahaduhum bil unsa," Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says when they would get the message of a daughter, "Walla wajhu muswadda," their faces would become like black, angry, disgraced. This is called old stories. Quran came to destroy old stories. When we were young we used to hear if a teaspoon falls on the ground then it means some visitor is coming. Then we would hear if a mirror breaks it means you will get bad luck. We would hear if a cat has to go past then you're going to have an accident. And we would hear if a cat cries at night you would see the people also throwing a stone at the poor cat. They say why you say if the cat is crying tomorrow someone's going to die. That poor cat was giving birth And he is wondering what that man is throwing stones on me for. We grew up in that. But when Quran came, it came to break all of that. Walla wajhuhu muswaddaw wa huwa kazim. Yatawara min al-qawmi min su'i ma bushira bih. Now he would hide his face from the people. That everyone is going to laugh at me. You are the father of a girl. Whereas there was never a disgrace in that. أَيُمْسِكُهُ عَلَىٰ هُونَ أَمْ يَدُسُّهُ فِي التُّرَابِ Must I keep the child and be disgraced my whole life? Rather I bury the child in the sand. Allah Tabarakullah says when shaitan made an evil act lovely for them, how terrible it was, how lovely it looked. That father would walk with that young girl now, 
The young girl was so attached to the man. As they're going, he said, where are we going now? Where are we going? Then the man starts digging the ground. Then the young girl is helping him dig. He narrates later on in his life to Rasulullah wasallam the favor of Islam. He said, she helped me to dig her own grave. And then I put her in the thing and she really thought it's a game and I started filling it, filling it. And she remained smiling till the ending, understanding that definitely at the last moment I'll pull out. He says, I don't know how I did it. Allah Tawarukala says, Allah sa ama What a world it was. But then Quran came and revolution took place. Allah as Nabi Islam Allah came, people cried on what they did. They realized what they did. Now came the time on the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the same thing was going to happen again. Shaitan was going to make Muzayyan smart for the world, filth and dirt. And if there was no light to break through that, then when the fitna, the evil of modernism would come, everyone would become modern. How the world would dress, we would dress. When they would say to the woman, wear clothing, woman would wear. When they would say to the woman, take out clothing, everyone will take it out. And you see it happening in the world. There was a time in the Christian world when not a Christian woman would walk around without a scarf. But the Christian church with all its power and might could not stop that fitna of modernism. When that fitna entered, it entered the church. It collapsed the church. Today the church will announce that for a boy to marry a boy is allowed. Girl marrying a girl is allowed. The church, the Pope's own daughter will be walking around without clothing, naked. The church wasn't able to push it away. No other faith was able to push it away. But there was the thought, how would Islam ever manage to put it away? When shaitan could bring them to that brink, that the man could kill his daughter and be happy about it. Today we have the world called open abortion. It is so booked, overbooked. People wait in lines for the child in my womb to be killed. And then we have the examples where a young child is found and pushed in the dustbin. Every day we are hearing in the newspaper. Found, child found in the gutter, found, child found in the burn. Why? The woman said, I don't want this child. وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ Almighty Allah says on that day, when the young child will be asked, that what was your crime that they killed you for it? Your mother and father made the crime, then they never want to look after you. وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ When abortion is taking place, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned after four months, soul is blown into the child. In the past they would ask, allow the abortion before that time would come. Today they are allowing it right till the ending. When that soul is blown in the child, the only difference is the child is not in the outside world, it's in the inside world. When that doctor puts in that instrument now looking for the child, those that saw scans found that the child cringed. That the child pulled back also wondering, what is this new thing coming in? And the thing that grabbed, it grabs whatever it can grab. It could be a finger of the child, leg of the child. At that time, those who looked at scans saw that the child pulls towards the mother. As though the child is saying, the only one who can save me now, mommy, is you. Doesn't understand that it's mommy who is murdering the child. Pulls back. The world would become filthy and dirty like how it was once upon a time. What was going to stop it happening like that? In the era of Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He created revolution, revolution. After that they could not harm an animal. To hurt a bird was difficult for them. They were taught how to hunt, they were taught how to make zabah. وَإِذَا زَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُوا When you're slaughtering your animal also show kindness to the animal you're slaughtering. From a level where they kill their own daughter, to a level where they had to have feelings for that sheep and that goat also. That even if you're going to put the knife, make sure the knife is sharp. Make sure the animal doesn't see it. Make sure you put the animal down quickly. Make sure very fast you slaughter it. The animal must feel no pain from what a level they were to what a level he took them. But then there was that concern that on the demise of the Nabi of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we also should one day reach where the Arabs of the past reached. 
that we would also be killing our daughters, abortion would also be amongst us, filth and dirt would also be with us, bashing our wives would also be our trait. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then mentioned that I am leaving behind for you two things. He said one is a silent lecturer, advisor for you and one is an evident and open advisor for you. When he said I am leaving behind these two things, it was such a statement that it means these two things, no matter what effort the world will make, it will manage to remain with the ummah till the ending. And it will manage to continue creating revolution till the ending. The first thing he said, silent lecturer but very loud. He said it's the lecture of death. The story of the Qabristan, that story when someone passes away and everyone is crying. Just last week someone got married, everyone was smiling. And then we are all at the Janaza house the following week and everyone is crying. But that wasn't the bayan of the Qabristan, that wasn't the bayan of the death. The bayan of the dead you get it when you visit the grave or when you think of the grave. Women are not allowed or not advised to go to the graveyard, but they're told, think of the grave. And men are told, visit the grave. Many people ask, what do I do when I go to the grave? For me, it's I'll go and read some dua for my father, my mother, they passed away. I'll read, Kul Allah Ahad three times. The purpose of visiting the grave is two. Number one is to remind us that we also going. And number two is to remind us that somebody already went. As soon as we get the reminder number two, someone went, it means my father went. So during the next week, my father needs me to think about him. But I'm in such a world of the modern world, fast world, I'll forget about him in one week. I'll go back to the graveyard, again I'll get the reminder, oh my son, I'm here in the water. Don't forget me for one week. Every time I go to the graveyard, the dead man is giving me a reminder, don't forget me. I don't need your kulwallah three times once a week. I need you every day to think about me. Because every day I want to enjoy a new feeling of that world. But this first message is, I'm also going. The world made an effort to break this death. And it affected many of our people. They created a perception of death that to die is bad. That to die is scary. That to die is a thing you don't want to. Find the best doctors, find the best hospitals, find the best medicine. No matter what you can do, push away that angel. That don't ever come to me, I don't want to die. Why? Because when I die, I'm going to prison, I'm going to jail, I'm going to be locked up. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left what was called a revolution. It was called the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever it reached, that person saw that the greatest gift, Tuhfatul Mu'mini al maut the greatest gift Allah has ever given a person is the gift of death. But no one will understand it. So when you go to a house where people are crying, my father passed away. And we explain to them, you're allowed to cry for two reasons. Reason number one, you're going to miss your father, no problem, cry. We say, but it seems you people are crying because you're thinking your father, poor father. He's all alone. What is going to do there? And then we explain to them, if you can understand what is death, it's a gift. It is the ending of all worries. It is the ending of all fears. It is the ending of all sicknesses. It's the ending of all pain. It is the opening of a prison which we are living in. But because our mind never told us there is another world, we can't imagine. When the child was in the womb of the mother, he thought this is all. Allah's Nabi said, my best example I can give you of death is the example of the child in the womb of the mother. While he is there, he thinks this is the beginning and the end of it all. He can never believe there could be something out of this. But when that child comes in this world and he sees the world, he will never be ready to go back to that womb. When death, the gift of death will come to any of us. After that, Allah's Nabi said, the angel reaches a point. And the angel asked that believer, you want to go back in the world? There's your wife, there's your child, there's your sister, there's your brother, there's your father, there's your business. And every believer says, to a world of sickness, poverty, fear, I'll never go. Once I'm out of that prison, why am I going to go back to the prison? Another world starts, it's not that graveyard that we see. There is a world 
whoever will go to the grave and he will stand at that grave and think that my journey is going to begin soon. It is a journey where we are entering that world. In that world we will either be blessed with the mara of paradise, may Allah give it to us all. Or we might see the mara of Jahannam, may Allah save us from all. If it is the mara of paradise, and may Allah make it is our mara of paradise, angels will immediately come down. They will have sheets of Jannah. They will open a window of Jannah. They will say to the person, that's your paradise, enjoy it, smell for a while, you're tired. But we are opening the windows, relax. But that's not the end. Then you will wake up in that world. Then angels will take you for excursions into paradise. Every episode will be another world. There will be times you will fly past the places you already made. There will be times where you will go to the arsh of Almighty Allah. There will be times where you will be allowed to taste from the fruits of paradise. Every episode will end. Where the man will say, wow, when it's going to start, when is Qiyamah going to come, I want to go into my paradise. And the angel will say, relax, this is just the beginning. Just is just this introducing you, it's still much more than this, still much more than this. The mara of paradise starts when we enter. And then there's another world after that, there's a journey. When you will stand in front of Allah on the day of Qiyamah, there will be a world. It will be a world where it will be said, Oh, mujrims, oh, criminals, stand on one side. And it will be a world where it will be said, Oh, lovers of Allah, come on another side. May Allah make us of the lovers of Allah. It will be a world where some people will be under the arsh of Allah and some people will be perspiring. It could be thousand years, it could be ten thousand years. It will have its own time zones. One man will be like performing a salah, another man will be drowning in his own perspiration. Perspiration. There will be a world, that episode will carry on. One man will be saying, let Qiyamah not end. Because if it ends, it's Jahannam. Another man will say, oh Allah, let me now enter into paradise. If under your arsh is so enjoyable, what's on the other side? Then there will be another world, where the book of deeds will be brought. For one person it will be an honor. Ha, wa mukra'u kitabiya, you say, come and read, come and read. Inni vanantu anni mulaqin hisabiya. I was convinced this day is coming. When you go to the grave, think about our life journey. It is not only till 60 years old. It is not only when I leave, I left behind a mansion. I left behind a business. When I stand by the grave, that grave must tell me, do not become involved in the trap of modernism. Do not become in the trap of a lie. Do not become entrapped in the trap of the world. The computer will show you what a lovely world. Holidays will show you what a lovely world. Money will show you what a lovely world. But the grave will tell you that your holiday is not going to help you on the side. And your money is not going to help you down there. And your business is not going to help you down there. And that child and that wife that which you died for is not going to help you down. Every time you stand by the grave, it is come to break the fitna. Because of the message of the grave, Allah Tabarukullah has protected the Muslim Ummah. Abortion has never come into us and Allah save it never comes. Many of our women, no matter how modern they come, a time comes where someone passes away in their family and that's when they cry and they cry. Then they open the Quran. Then many of them after that will say, I lost the, int- the desire to live. Now you say, let's go for a holiday. They say, what must I go for a holiday for? That message of death is a unique message. Every one of us when we go and stand by the grave, think about this. That that grave is giving a message. Someone's already gone. He needs you to think about him. And somebody is also coming. That's me and that's you. Every time I stand at that. That is why when you go to the graveyard, first visit the graves which are already closed. And read a little bit for all of them. But what's the dua you read when you enter the grave? Assalamu alaikum ahl diyar Salam to you people of the house of this place. This is also a house. Assalamu alaikum ahl diyar min al mu'minin wal muslimin. Wa inna insha Allah bikum lalahikun. Normally, why you say insha Allah? Insha Allah, you say for something you want. Here we are saying insha Allah, soon we also coming. Every time you enter the graveyard, you are making the dua, I want to die. Only perhaps we don't know it. Death is a gift. But stand by the grave and think of our journey. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I leave behind you the silent message of death. It's a unique message but it's very silent. 
Then he said, I have left behind you what is called revolution of the Quran. This revolution is such, from the demise of Allah's Nabi Wasallam, so much of effort was made, that if the Quran doesn't manage to reach, the people will never stand firm. If in a hundred years time there's no Quran, it would have meant in a hundred years time there's no Islam. We are touched 1,400 plus years. Muharram started a new year, 1421. That 1421 meant gave a message to the world. That 1,400 years of effort to break the Quran. But the Quran is that flame that doesn't ever go off. It is like one candle that is standing. Think of this power. And then we will end what this jalsa of Amalo is. Every enemy that ever came. The height of that group of enemy, what we speak about today, Illuminati and Freemasonry. And you speak about knights and they go on different levels. Then you get that one level which is the highest towards the satanic powers. Meet with them, greet with them, talk with them, plan with them. The highest and highest of every talk. Lower than that day is create a modern mind. You see the whole world is caught in modernism. Lower than that day is create one syllabus of education. The whole world got one syllabus. Lower than that is create entertainment. Everyone is mad with the entertainment. Create an internet that pulls everyone in. Create a web that grabs everyone. Create entertainment in the pocket of people. And it's going wild. No way in the world is stopping it. On the top, 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 the message is, and make sure that the Quran is removed from the entire world. That is on the top. But because we ourselves will never understand what is the power of Quran, we will never understand why they have to worry so much of the Quran. On the demise of Allah's Nabi Wasallam, wherever an attack on the Muslim Ummah took place, Quran was the target and the people of Quran were the target. They searched for the Hafiz and they searched for the Quran. Whether it was when the Tartars accept, accepted the Muslim world, in that period of 50 years they went through countries. They say Uzbekistan, Turkistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Then they entered into Baghdad, Iraq, Bukhara and Samarkand was the land of Imam Bukhari. Everything was wiped out. They said libraries and libraries of books were wiped, but Quran was the main target. Scholars, Hufaz and Quran, nothing left. There was something called Spanish Inquisition in Spain. The target was ulama and Quran. Russia put a ban so many years. Target was Quran and ulama. Recently one alim wrote one book. He says the stories from the Azad states, the free states, when Russia then broke, the communist rule broke, and finally Muslims were allowed to live a little life of freedom. They met one 93-year-old man. He said at the age of 25 it was when this communist rule became that no one can read Quran, teach Quran. Any scholar who they knew was already killed, so if you got no teacher, who's going to teach? And then they would go into the houses to make sure no one is reading Quran. Someone would have said to them, what's the whole issue? The school is yours. The environment is yours. The child doesn't even know the language of the Quran. But that satanic world on top understood, as long as there's a Quran being read, it creates a light that goes out. Because of this light, the entire town, the entire village, the entire city, the entire country, the entire world will never fall into that world of zulma which is was once upon in. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu revolution was going to remain with this Quran. That person says those scholars who are not killed encourage the people build houses such that in the center it's big and broad and every wall around it is soundproof. Every wall in that center hall. Then there was one wall, one passage going through. On the passage he said we would put liquor bottles. And we would put filthy, filthy pictures. And we would put the picture of Lenin. And then when these guards would come into the houses to see if any teaching of Quran took place, any teaching, then when they would come to that passage and they would see the filthy, filthy things on the passage, they would understand that these people have also become now into a communist idea. He said, only they never realized behind that filthy, filthy liquor bottle. He says, when we would enter it, people of the house would enter they would live in that secret passage for six months. For six months, they would not come into the house. They would plan it for the winter months when the snow would prevent daily checks by the army. 
He said the sound of Quran could not be heard outside in the house itself, but in the dungeon, in a private area, Allah Taala preserved our iman because of preserving the Quran. Turkey, Mustafa Kamal came, he made a law, no one must know the Arabic language, no one must read the Arabic language, no one must have any inclination to Quran. Go and visit Turkey today, before the Fajr Salah, if we go in the month of Ramadan, before the Fajr Salah, meaning after Seri, normally in South Africa after Seri, we want Fajr immediately, get the Fajr, read the Fajr in the bed and at least half the Rosa we can sleep through. There after the Seri, the people will come to the Masjid. They know that for maybe hundred years we never got the chance like what you all got today. There was no maktab. There was no chance to memorize Quran. But what a light this was. Go and see it today. You will see that whole town, that whole village. You might see 10,000, you might see 5,000 people sitting. And then you will see one Qari taking the Quran in the front. And for one hour perhaps he'll be reading Quran, half an hour. And either some people got the Quran open and with their hands they're following. They don't know what he's reading. Some people don't even open the Quran. Some people are trying to read with their tongue. As you see that sight, you will understand a promise that Allah made that this Quran has come to stay. No matter what fitna came to remove this Quran, this Quran never was removed. It broke through that communist regime. It broke through the Kamalist regime. Russia tried what it wants. Spain tried what it wants. Turkey tried what it wants. In the world today, every phone that comes tries to say, go away from Quran. Quran broke through the phone. Now you are entering a masjid, you'll see a man with the phone in front of him. You look what's on the phone, you'll see he's reading Quran on the phone also. Quran broke through every and everything. A man who never thought I need Quran, Quran broke in his life. In the past when we were small, everyone's mind was a modern mind. The main thought of his was, my child must become a lawyer, child must become a doctor, my child must make money, my child must become great in the world. Darul Ulum started in South Africa, Mia's farm started the first one perhaps. Before that day there was a person called Tuang Guru, an Indonesian prince. The Dutch most likely imprisoned him in Robben Island. They said he had conspired with the British. When they put him there, they never thought, they knew he is a man of books. So they ensured that he takes not one book with him into the prison. They never understood that his Quran from inside will create books. While he was in the prison, he started writing copies of Quran. Perhaps he wrote about 10 copies of Quran. You will never understand what it takes to write 10 copies, but that flame of Quran, when it makes something happen. He wrote the Shia fiqh, the, the Shafi'i fiqh. And then it spread out. They said when he came out, he came out perhaps in the age of over 80. When he came out, he opened a small madrasa in the Bokaf area. Today what we have, Owal Masjid in that area. There also one of the copies of Quran he wrote is there. They said he opened a small madrasa for the slaves of Cape Town. Now imagine, Islam is banned in the country. And there is only school teaching Afrikaans. And now he opens a small madrasa where he's only going to teach one hour or two hours. What is he going to teach in that time? One of the colonels of perhaps the Dutch or the British, whoever was in charge, wrote a letter to the central government that we have found the small house. In this house, this man is teaching 375 children. If he has to be allowed to teach them then there is no way the religion of this people is going to be taken away. What they had to write that for? Someone would have picked up and said, you're mad, this is a small maktab. In this one hour, how is he going to influence these people? You got the whole day with them. They in the school for so many hours. They understood that the protection of your children, think about how many hours you send them to school. Some places we have a Muslim school, it's still a better system, but the syllabus is still the same. Some people nowadays are saying that they teach so much in that school, which is actually nothing. In today's time, a person who's going to school, I think his father and mother are doing more homework than the child himself. The only purpose of that school is to just drain the child, drain him, drain him. Wake him up at a time where he's so tired. That one year old, what he got to do, that seven year old, five year old, that he must wake up 7 o'clock in the morning. 
Seven o'clock in the morning, he must go and sit in front of the teacher. What they teach in school could have been done in three hours. But to drain the child, drain the child, drain the child. As soon as you're tired, come into us and we will send you back when you're tired. And we will send you back with so much homework that after that we'll pull you to eight o'clock, half past eight at night. Then you will go on the bed and finish game over. Wake up again next day, wake up again next day. Let us Saturday come, we got some extra activity for you. So much effort was made. Why? So that the child's parents in the ending will say that because school is so important, but I can't oppress my child. So that maktab that is two hours after that is too taxing on my child. He needs time to rest. Really they thought it would happen, but that flame of Quran broke through that also. Forget that child going to maktab for the two hours. When we were small, our friends were Hindus. We used to see after school, they going out to play, but we have to go for maktab. Another two hours, right? Tell Asr. They never thought that that flame of Quran will bring that child back into the maktab. It will keep him till the hours of five. Forget that Quran broke through that. Then the hip system started. The hip system was going to say to that young child, forget your waking up seven o'clock for school. You will have to now wake up one hour before Fajr for his. And you will have to come after Maghrib for his. They never thought a father would be ready to say, I'll allow that to happen. But when that flame of Quran started burning, even that was going to happen. It was going to break through so many things. Then you would find that one father who would say, that I don't need my child to be in school. I'll take him out. Take him out for one whole year. What's so important of school? And then suddenly in South Africa, we found his classes, full time his class. We never believed it could be happening, but that flame of Quran. Suddenly you meet the boy, what you doing? Say, I'm doing his. What else you doing? Say, I'm only doing his of Quran. That flame of Quran started burning. It burnt and burnt. Suddenly that boy said, I only learned to read Quran. I want to learn more. I want to learn the meaning of Quran. To learn the meaning of Quran, there were certain madaris put up. Whoever thought, Sheikh Mahmoud Afandi of Turkey at the time on the Kamalist regime had made an effort that no teaching must take place at all. No madrasas must be at all. It must only become European. Become European. Go out and see what is England. Go into the European world. Dress like them. Behave like them. Talk like them. So they would invite him. Come for bayan. He would say to a town, I will come to your town on one condition. That you open a maktab. He said, even if it's as small as where the chicken pen is, and there's only one teacher and one student, he said, there is so much of noor that that one madrasa will create, it will one day hit this entire country. Go and visit Turkey today, you will understand what he meant at that time. Every town he visited, the condition was, there must be a maktab there. Morana always asked me when I'm coming to Amalo, so I said, my condition for Amalo is every time there's a jalsa in Amalo. One boy graduates, you will never understand that when that hills class is taking place in the morning, it is pushing a light out. That light is hitting every house in this locality. You will never understand the power of light until darkness falls. The day darkness falls, people will start killing their wives and their children like what's happening in the world around us. People will start slaughtering their daughters, what's happening in the world around us. Children will just become atheists for no reason what's happening in the world around us. Suddenly when a light of Quran starts, the power of those small boys who are reading Quran, many a time we say, Mubarak to you, glad tidings to you. Rather it is glad tidings to the area surrounding that Hafiz. His reading in that early part of the morning doesn't affect him only. It affects the people sleeping in the beds. It changes minds. It makes more people interested. Some people have come from overseas to Azadwal. Some of them said we want to move into this town. We find there's a certain light in that town. We will never understand what that light is. So one person said because there's so many alims in this town. He was corrected. He said so much of Quran takes place in the hills classes of this town. Because of that power of Quran, a light is created. And it moves and it moves. The enemy understood it and they made so much effort. The Qur'an must not survive. Today when we look in a masjid, look at the amount of Qur'ans. This is your one amalo, think of your masjid. 
Think about eight boys reading Quran. Then Fajr time is coming. More people are reading Quran. It still looks very small. Now join Ermalo with another ten towns around you. Each one got its mustab. Now there are seven hundred boys reading Quran now. Now there are seven thousand people reading Quran. Then go a little bit bigger and we now take the whole South Africa. Now we might be going into seventy thousand people reading Quran. You might say so many, definitely it is going. Now going to the whole world. And you will find into the hundreds of thousands. Before the Fajr Adhan, the word of Allah is taking place in the whole world. Whole world is Quran. And as that boy memorizes or he starts memorizing, that flame has now pulled him that you are also part of the Maria miraculous flame. You have joined the army of Allah. But it is not only for him. When his journey of faith started, suddenly that house started hearing more Quran than they ever thought in their life they will hear. That boy had to be making door every day he's reading Quran. He had to wake up early in the morning, the whole family had to wake up or someone had to wake up. He came home at night, he had to be reading Quran. Even if no one else in that house was reading, they were definitely listening to Quran. That is why it said when a boy finishes hifz of Quran, it's a relax for his parents because now they know hey, he's finished, jalsa over. But for him it's a beginning of a second journey. Look after your Quran. Had Almighty Allah wanted as a favor from Allah, He could have said once you finish your hifz, I will make sure you will never forget Quran. Allah could have done that as a greater favor from Allah. Allah Taala said, if you don't carry on reading, I will take away your Quran. Why do we call it a favor from Allah? Because the purpose of hifz was not memorizing. The purpose of hifz was the reading. And as long as that man is scared, I'll lose it, he'll carry on reading. So every day that boy, and may Allah make Abdullah in every half his layer. Every day that person will read Quran, just in the fear I mustn't forget my Quran. As he reads that Quran, it creates a light. It was before in the masjid only. Now because he's a hafiz of Quran, he might not be coming class every day. Suddenly he's in his house reading Quran. Suddenly he's in his business reading Quran. Suddenly while he's driving to work, he's reading Quran. He goes back in school, you'll see what a small Quran is walking. Suddenly that light in areas where they never imagined, suddenly you start seeing that light spreading and spreading and spreading. The Quran is a flame that has come to ignite the entire world. That boy who got Quran, Mubarak to him, Mubarak to his family, but every other one of us, if we haven't got the hifz of Quran, we still got the chance to read Quran. And that light doesn't come by reading by heart. That right is created just by reading. So everyone in a hifz jalsa, the purpose of the bayan is that when we come out, there's no hugging the boy. Rather it's thinking that, oh Allah, that Quran 1400 years ago reached me also. So in the day do I also read that Quran. This is that revolution that came death will speak to every one of us. Quran also came to speak to every one of us. Whoever will read Quran, he will see in his own house that light will start. You don't need lot, you can even read little. Some people feel, I forgot my Quran, let me just stop reading. The purpose of hives of Quran was not memorizing. It was continuous reading. Even if you have to read inside because you can't remember your hives, just read Quran. Read half a page, read one page, read 20 pages. It has created miracles from the beginning of time. It will create miracles in South Africa. Whoever will hold on to Quran, his generation's iman will be looked after. His mind will never become an atheist mind. His body will never become a filthy, dirty body. He will find no crave for drugs and filth and dirt. Quran is a light. When it starts, it creates warmth within the body. A lot of people say today that how do we chase away the fitan of the time? The evil of the time. He says, I must buy my child a phone. If I don't buy him a phone, he'll get a phone. He'll go and see what his friends must I keep him locked up in the house. He just needs to meet one friend on the outside in the school. Introduce him to one drug. His entire life is destroyed. So they ask, how do we push away the filth and the dirt? So the answer is darkness you can't push away. But you can put on your own light. He cold you can't push away. When winter comes, what we do? We don't give a bayan to winter don't come. 
We don't make dua that winter mustn't come. But we make sure before winter we put on our own heaters. We create our own warmth. The cold doesn't come in there. The day you put on off your heater, that is when you will start feeling cold. The day Quran will leave our houses, will leave our community, will leave our people, that's the day every one of us will become atheist. We'll become Satanist. We'll become filthy and dirty. We'll become barbaric. The day a light comes on, warmth comes on. Now the cold of winter will not hit that house. You say to a person, eat warm food. Now your warmth is inside the body. Wear warm clothing. Your warmth is surrounding the body. Put on a heater. Warmth is around you. We beg the world. We put on the power of Quran in your houses. Let a tape be playing with Quran. You come home, read one page of Quran. Say to your wife, you read one page of Quran. Encourage your child. If one boy is becoming Hafiz, so much of Quran will be read in that house. So much of Quran that your house will never have to experience the cold of winter entering. It will never have to experience darkness entering. If there is light inside, you will become a light for your own self. You will become a light for the whole town. This is what this Jalsa is called. Allah Tabarukullah says, فَبِذَٰلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا if you want to be happy, be happy with this. هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ This is more greater than anything you could have ever gathered in your life. Everything else will leave you when you go into that next journey of the grave. The Quran will go with you. No one will stand with you on the day of Qiyamah. The Quran will stand with you. It's not only for the Hafiz. Allah's Nabi Wasallam, when he spoke, he always spoke about Sahibul Quran, the man of Quran. You don't have to be a Hafiz for it. Create a relationship with Quran. All of us. Go in Turkey and you will see the relationship of those people. They are dying just to be able to read Quran. Allah favored us so much. So much He favored us. That all of us can read Quran. There are some of us who perhaps forgot because we learned when we are young. It is so easy to create an environment of Quran. Take the example of Turkey. Tell the Imam of the Masjid. Tell a friend in the house. Every day I want to read quarter power of Quran. Every day. But I can't read it. But I like how you read. So you and me every day will sit. It only takes 10 minutes. It's after one salah we'll sit in one corner. I'll open my Quran. You open your Quran. And you start reading for me. And I will just follow and try to follow with you. Your quarter power will take place 10 minutes. My quarter power will take place. People bought what is called Quran pen. They put it on. The Quran is reading. And they are following there. There's millions of ways. The Quran has reached out to all of us. The only thing is we must just take it and say, I'm allowing you back in my life again. When that Quran will come, miracles will happen in that house. It will change the thoughts. It will change the eyes. It will change the body. It will change the whole town. So many families we saw. Someone will say, you know, this family was once upon a time so modern, so modern. Then they will say, what happened to it? They will say, the miracle of Quran changed the whole family. One boy became a Hafiz, another boy became an Alim. There is one son, he's a Qari. Miracles, this Quran has come. It has come in this town to make miracles. South Africa, it is made a miracle. When that Sheikh, Tuang Guru, it was called the teacher, Mr. Teacher, Tuang Guru. When he was in that jail writing that Quran, perhaps he never thought that one day in South Africa, Quran won't be written in a jail. It will be taught in every town of South Africa. He never thought it. But that miracle of Quran, and it's a journey that we're going higher. So now I will just end on what I want after. Because this thing as this light is created, it created the Darul Ulums. Quran created it. It created the Makatib system. Quran created it. There was a time in South Africa, there was no Tarawi. Quran created it. Now there's tarawi in towns and towns, houses and houses, garages and garages. When Ramadan comes, you'll think you're in Saudi Arabia. You will think you're in an Arab world. He's reading, he's reading. At that time, it was each boy must read because there's no hafiz of Quran. How much are you going to read? Nowadays, they're fighting. Then there was a time in the past where the boy said, I'm going to read six rakats. Nowadays, you'll hear the hafiz saying, I don't read six rakats. I want to read 10 to 20 rakats. So they say, okay, you read in that house. And he got his jamaat. You read in that house. You got your jamaat. Miracles are happening. But when you're climbing a ladder, we don't stop. And I will end inshallah in five minutes. I want you to go one further. Maybe it will be this town that will start it. Maybe it will be another town. 
It is a cry from the inside. Whoever will start it, blessed is that person. And may Allah show the barakat of that after. One thing we are missing in this country is that the boy who is reading Quran, Allah's Nabi said, he who learns Quran when he's young, that Quran will enter into his flesh and his bones. We are missing one thing only. That our child who's learning that Quran doesn't know the meaning of that Quran. So he goes through an entire three years where he has seen the miracles of Quran but he couldn't see it. He has learned the most unique words of Quran but he never understood the meaning. Although it put him so high in the world, during that three years if that boy knew what he's reading. I visited Nigeria. There was a jalsa. A young boy had to read Quran. One verse he chose. This verse got a unique meaning. يَوْمَ نَقُولُ Jahannam On the day where we will say to Jahannam, Halim Talati, Are you full? Allah Tabarakullah will speak to Jahannam, Are you full? وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِمْ مزيد. And Jahannam will say, I want more. Normally in Madrasa, when someone would eat Lord food, we would read this verse. That we would ask the person, Halim Talati, you full? And the person say, bring more. There was one master of the Arabic language, Sheikh Tantawi. He visited Germany at a time where non-Muslims were also learning the Arabic language and mastering it. So they said to him, you really feel this book is like a miracle, what's miraculous about it? So he said to them, you all are masters in the Arabic language, you all describe to me. If I want to say Jahannam is huge, how will you say it in the Arabic language? So in the Arabic language there's a hundred ways of saying it. Like how in English you will say we will say, Dubai is unique, Dubai is big, Dubai is extraordinary, Dubai is very huge. That's the most you will carry on, huge, huge, bigger, bigger. Then he read this verse, يَوْمَ نَقُولُ Jahannam. He said, let's see how Allah described the size of Jahannam. On the day where thousands and millions and millions will be burning in Jahannam. يَوْمَ نَقُولُ Jahannam. On that day we will say to Jahannam, Halim Talati, are you full? And Jahannam will say, I still got space for more. He said, have you ever find a description like that? When that young boy sat reading Quran, he was only about seven years or six years old. He's our child. He began reading that verses. Normally when our boys will read Quran, Tirat, and everyone will say, Allah, Allah, he also will be happy. But because the meaning is not known. That boy as he read, he read about three verses and then he came here. And he read, يَوْمَ نَقُولُ Jahannam. On the day when we will say to Jahannam, Halim Talati, are you full? That seven year old boy burst out crying. Burst out. I thought it's like one great alim giving a bayan. Everyone was silent. Everyone had a cheer going down. Then again the boy said, يَوْمَ نَقُولُ Jahannam. On the day when we will say to Jahannam, are you full? And again he stopped. And then he tried one more time and the boy just said, Sadaqallahu alazim and he went down. At that time I understood what is the power of a boy who learns Quran and he knows the meaning also. But it is not easy for the alim who is running the his class to start teaching them that wording of Quran. What my desire is, there are so many alimas now. And there are so many home schools now. And so many people when the child is young, instead of putting them directly into school, they feel for the first few years, let's do homeschooling. Because in homeschooling they teach the same thing and they're still saving a couple of hours. Only they don't know what to do with those hours. What to do with that hour. If alimas can start teaching young children from the age of four years old the meaning of the Arabic language. When a child is young he can learn any language, any language. So in that time when she's teaching him English and he's going to learn English whether he likes it or not. She's teaching him maths. But the amount of maths they teach in the world only about 2% need so much maths. The rest of the world got calculators. Ask anyone, work out one sum. You think he's going to say, hey, my teacher taught me how to work it out. They got a calculator, press this plus this divided by that. The other man who studied so much accounting, he's still trying to work it out. The man says, here's your answer. We got a time nowadays where we don't need to study science. Because you just press on Google what's happening in the world, Google will tell you everything. 
The boy who is listening to the teacher nowadays knows more than the teacher. The teacher says something, he'll say, no, you're wrong teacher, this is how it is. Yeah, I got the facts here, Google told me. There is no need for such a long school system. So if you go into a homing system, in three hours they can finish that whole schooling system. What do they do with the rest of the time? If that alima can start teaching your children. But she'll only do it if someone tells her, do it and I'll pay you for it. That every child of mine, before I enter him into the maktab, before he starts learning how to read Quran, before his chan comes to become a hafiz of Quran, I want my child to know the meaning of Quran. Because the journey of hymns, I want to make it enjoyable for him. Now when he will go and learn his sabak, when a child is learning sabak for hymns, he'll read that same page 20 times. If he knows the meaning of it 20 times, he will be amazed at the brilliance of the meaning of Quran. That boy, his ustad will tell him, go and read two rakats of the hajjud. Because he knows the meaning of Quran, when he will stand with the two rakats, he won't want to end it. If anyone understands the meaning of Quran, in our madrasa we see those that come from Palestine, they don't have a chance of hifz there, but they know the meaning of Quran. When they come here, you see whole day they in salah. You enter the hifz class, they're not reading to the ustad, they're reading in salah. They say there's such an enjoyment of reading Quran in salah, because as they're reading, they're crying, they're cheering, to give our children that opportunity. That before they enter into Mufti Sahib's hifz class, they already know the meaning of Quran. If they know the meaning, they won't get caught in mutashabihat anymore. Surah Yusuf won't be the hardest surah anymore. Those ayat which they were always getting confused with the meaning, suddenly they'll go through it all. They will know when it's ya'lamun and ta'lamun. They will know when it's dhamma, when it's supposed to be fatha. The main thing is as they reading, as the fitan of darkness is hitting the whole world, that child from the age of seven will enter the word of Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa he, that child who will learn Quran when he's young, it will permeate, enter into his flesh and into his bones. Your child, my child, may Allah make them, they will be the child. May Allah ta'ala put it in someone's heart, put it in everyone's heart, create that opportunity for our children. That before they have to enter to Mufti Sahib's class or any his class, they already know enough of the meaning of Quran. That the journey of days of Quran becomes a unique, enjoyable journey. As for those that never learned that meaning, they must beg their ustad that now when I'm making door, create such a cause for me that in the next two, three months I can learn the meaning. Because my whole life I'm going to be reading this Quran. If I know what I'm reading, it makes the letter of Almighty Allah more and more enjoyable. May Allah Taala create this reality. We have come so far in South Africa. Our hymns classes have come so far, Tajweed has come so far, Qirat has come so far. Inshallah, Allah create this year that in every house there will be people who will know the meaning of Quran. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillah.